you wouldn't actually have to have a use on everything, would you? As no. As it stands. Yep. There's actually a variety of problems with the code as it stands. Um, there are three problems. First problem is I can instantiate an item. What's an item? Well, it's an item. That's it. Doesn't really do anything. In fact, the only reason I made the item type at all was so that I could in, in uh, or override these methods. I don't care about an item type. I don't want to be able to instantiate an item. I only want to be able to derive from it. Second problem, this implementation. Remember, methods, virtual and non-virtual methods require an implementation, but the implementation is empty. It's pointless. It's useless. I don't like it. The third, the third problem is, is what Gavin pointed out, that I don't, like, let's say I wanted my potion to do nothing, and I could do that. I'm not being forced to implement any of the members inside of item. I could just leave these out if I wanted to. And that's stupid. I want somebody who inherits from my item class, I want to force them to provide functionality, because if they're not providing this functionality, then they shouldn't be inheriting my item to begin with. Yes, don't drink a potion if you don't know what it's going to do. Yeah. So abstract classes and abstract members solve this problem. That's sort of interface, but we'll get into those later. Instead of saying public virtual void display, I can say public abstract void display. Now, I'm about to receive two compiler errors. Bam, I called it. Um, I get two <laughs> compiler errors. The first one is an abstract member cannot have an implementation. An abstract member can only have a, a signature. It cannot have any implementation in it. So let's delete the implementation. That's problem number one. The second problem is that an abstract um, method or an abstract member inside of a class, if you have one, you have to mark your class as abstract. So this must be an abstract class if I have any abstract members within it. So now I get a build succeeded. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to say abstract void use, control shift B, build succeeded. So now you see that everything works just like it did before. I have an abstract class item that forces people to implement display and use. And note that when you get rid of the body, you obviously have to put in a semicolon. You're now all your it's you're literally you're just declaring the display and use methods essentially just as if you were declaring a private string model. Uh, this is kind of like prototyping in C++. Not not exactly. C++ actually has virtual and abstract con the virtual and abstract concept inside of it. Actually, it's called virtual and pure virtual. Basically, what I've done is I've created the class that forces every inheriting class to implement these two methods. So now you see down on, on uh, line 78, I can instantiate a list of items named inventory, and I can add my chair, my gun, and my potion to that. And then I can loop over it and invoke these particular methods on it without knowing what kind of item it is. All I know is that Every single item within this list has a display method and has a use method. And because C Sharp is a statically typed language, we need to be able to know at compile time whether or not a piece of code should work.